This coming Friday, the latest installment of the Hunger Games movies will hit the, the theaters. And one of the prominent actors in there is Philip Seymour Hoffman, the late Philip Seymour Hoffman. What an incredible actor. Could take any sort of role and diversify it and do it. And yet, as we will see him on the screen this Friday, it will be a sad reminder of talent wasted. Of someone whose demons of addiction got the best of him and cut his life short. Now that the World Series is over, New York Yankee Alex Rodriguez's suspension because of steroid use has been lifted. And there have been a lot of articles in the paper speculating about what this 30-year-old athlete with two bad hips can contribute to the New York Yankees next year. And what a sad story of talent wasted that is. Because from a young age, Alex Rodriguez, A-Rod, was a natural athlete with this gift, God-given gift of baseball and the ability. Yet when his career is over, his legacy will not be remembered because of his talent, but because he was so obsessed with being the best that he was willing to cheat and take shortcuts to get ahead. One of the saddest things that we can see in life are people who are not living up to the talent or using the talent that has been given to them. My wife Lisa was recently having a conversation with another young woman that she works with who was lamenting the fact that she had played piano her whole life to the point that she was so good at it she got a scholarship to go to, to college to study it. But now that she's in her 30s, she's lamenting the fact that her piano sits in her living room gathering up dust. And she doesn't even have the time or make the time to play it with her three-year-old son. These last two weeks of the church here continue to turn our focus and our attention toward the end times when God calls us home to eternal life and we take inventory of things. And today we hear this parable of the talents where the question is asked, what do we do with the gifts and the blessings that God gives to us? So Jesus tells the story of these three servants. The first one, the one who receives the five talents is the classic overachiever. The reason he receives five talents in the first place is because it's pretty well known that whatever he does, he does well and turns into good things. And so he does not disappoint. He does exactly what he's supposed to do and he doubles the amount of talents, the investment that his master gives to him. Now the second one who receives the two talents, not as much as expected of him. It would be okay if he came back with maybe half the return, but this one also doubles his master's treasure. So he exceeds expectation. Then there's the last one, the one who's received the one talent, obviously a history of disappointment and failure, and on this occasion, he does not fail to disappoint. He brings no return on the investment. Now, a talent that Jesus is talking about in the parable isn't merely just a coin or a currency. It's a whole measure of wealth. A talent was equivalent probably to about 75 pounds of gold or silver. So this was no light task. This was no small request on the part of the master. To each talent was 75 pounds of his treasure and his worth. And so the, the oldest, the first, who had the five talents, he's given a great amount of treasure to double and return on the investment. And I don't think it is a coincidence that when we talk about our lives, the blessings, the gifts that God gives to us, that we call them our talents. Because it's not merely a coin or a currency to be traded with. It is a trove of treasures that God has given to us to make a difference in life in this world. The question being put before us today is exactly that. What are your gifts? What are your talents? And how are you using them? Are you using them to the best of your ability? For each and every one of us here has been made in the image of our Creator. We've each been given specific gifts, specific blessings that God calls upon us to discover and to use. And from a young age in our life, it's all about discovering what these gifts and blessings are and then utilizing them to make the world a better place. For some of us, it takes a little bit longer than others to discover them. But the blessing is, is that we do indeed discover them and use them. And we must keep in mind that the gifts and the blessings that God gives to us 
often aren't the same thing that the world around us finds value in or seems to think is worthwhile. But the question for you is, what's your talent? What's that smoldering fire that's been burning in you that can't be put out? What's that thing that you wish you could cultivate and use more? What's that one thing that you don't care what everyone else thinks about in the world? You know it gives you joy and you gives you fulfillment. For that's the calling that God has put before you. To use these talents and to use these gifts to your utmost and to making the world a better place. And so often in life, the things that really make a difference the things that are really a blessing and a treasure, a talent that are used for others, aren't the things that give us something in return, aren't something, aren't things that we are rewarded for. They're not the things that the world values. But so often those blessings are the things that make a real difference. The opportunity to really listen and hear what somebody has to say. An opportunity to show love, to be helping hands of support and encouragement to others to be a blessing to those who may not be as blessed. That's why it's so appropriate that today we have the opportunity to be challenged ourselves about whether or not we have the talent or the ability to work with youth and guide them to come and see the blessings that they may not know they have in their own lives. It may seem that as we hear the parable in the gospel lesson that Jesus' message is pretty harsh, especially to that last Serve. But we must keep in mind that parables are exaggerated stories told by Jesus that aren't intended to be deep theological discourses about God, but they're simple messages to give us a, a better understanding about the nature of God. And there's a lot we can take away from this parable of the talents. First of all, right up front, as the master dispenses the amounts of talents to each of the three servants, we hear that the master does this each according to their ability. God knows us intimately. He created us. He understands us. He knows our limitations. When God calls us to use our talents and our abilities, he calls us according to what he knows we're capable of and what we can do. And then at the end, when the master's chastising and yelling at the, the servant who buried the one talent and did nothing with it, the real issue there comes out of the mouth of the servant himself. He recognizes and says that he knows his master expected him to do something with the treasures that were entrusted with him, but out of his fear, he uses it as an excuse for laziness and only does is bury it till the day that, that the master will come back and then he can safely return it to him, doing nothing with the talents, with the treasure that's been given to him. God gives us these gifts, and God calls us to use these gifts to make a difference in the world. A difference that maybe we don't always see, but God knows that it makes a difference. Brother Angelo was a monk who studied under Francis of Assisi. And one day, Brother Angelo learned a pretty valuable lesson about sharing with others. There were some beggars that had come to him asking for food because they were hungry. But Brother Angelo knew that they were also criminals, so he chastised them and sent them away with nothing. When St. Francis of Assisi heard about this, he decided that Brother Angelo needed to learn a little lesson. So he said, this is what you're going to do. You're going to grab some bread and your wine, and you're going to take it and find these beggars apologize to them, and share with them what they needed. Brother Angelo approached this with fear and trembling because he knew where they lived and it wasn't the safest or the cleanest part of town. And he was afraid that because he rejected them, they would take it out on him in some sort of punishment. But he was surprised to find that when he got there and he apologized, that not only did they receive it with happiness and joy, but they were even willing to follow him back to the Franciscan order, where they then dedicated the rest of their lives to the service of God's kingdom. We don't always know, and we may not always see, the way our talents, our blessings, our gifts, and our treasures make a difference in the world. 
that's not the point. God sees it. God knows it. And God works with it. And remember this. Each and every one of us is sitting here today because someone in our lives at some point shared their talent and their treasure of faith with us.